Have you ever wondered what angels are like? They are incredible creatures that live in the sky and serve God. They have powers that we cannot even imagine. They can fly, fight, heal, and even change shape. They are the protectors and friends of those who love God. They are always ready to obey the Father's orders and do His will. The Bible tells us that there are many angels in heaven, millions and millions of them, but she only reveals the names of a few. You've probably heard of three of them, Miguel, Gabriel, and Raphael. But did you know that there is a fourth angel who has a very special name? It's him and the other three that we're going to talk about in this video. But first, I need to tell you something very important. Angels are not people who died. Many people think that when someone dies, they become an angel. But that is not true. The Bible says that we human beings are different from angels. We were created by God to live on the earth and care for it. Angels were created by God to live in heaven and worship Him. See what Psalm 8 says about this. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You who have set your glory in the heavens, who is man, do you remember him? And the Son of Man, may you visit him? However, you made him, for a little while, lower than the angels, you crowned him with glory and honor, and made him dominate over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, sheep and oxen, all of them, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and everything that walks along the paths of the seas. And there's one more thing you need to know. Not all angels are good. Some of them rebelled against God and were expelled from heaven. They are called fallen angels. And their leader is the first angel the Bible mentions by name, Satan. According to the book of Genesis, on the second day of creation, after making light and darkness, God made heaven. And on that same day, he may have made the angels. And among them, there was one that stood out for its beauty and its power. This angel is called Lucifer by many, which means angel of light or morning star. But this name does not appear in the Bible. The story of how he became Satan, which means adversary or enemy, is told in two books of the Old Testament, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. He was a powerful and wise angel, and perhaps the most beautiful and brilliant one God created. He should have felt honored to be close to God, but he felt proud. He wanted to be more than an angel. He wanted to be equal to God. He wanted to take his place. He thought that his beauty and his power were his merits and not gifts from God. He forgot who his creator and Lord was. The Bible shows us in Ezekiel 28 that Satan was perfect in his ways until sin was found in his heart. See what is written. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom because of your radiance. I cast you to the ground. I set you before kings that they might look upon you. By the multitude of your iniquities, by the unrighteousness of your trade, you have profaned your sanctuaries. So I caused a fire to come out from among you, and it consumed you, and I turned you to ashes on the earth in the eyes of all who saw you. Lucifer didn't want to regret his pride. He wanted to continue with his plan to rebel against God. And he wasn't alone. He managed to trick about a third of the angels into following him. Then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against Lucifer and his angels. But they were not strong enough to win. They lost their place in heaven. They were thrown out. They fell to the earth. See what the word of God says about this moment. There was fighting in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels also fought. However, they did not prevail. Their place was no longer found in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, the seducer of the whole world. Yes, he was cast down to the earth, and his angels with him. The army of rebellious angels was not able to defeat the army of faithful angels. The losers were sent to earth. And since then, they have been called fallen angels. And at the end of time, they will be judged and condemned by God. Have you ever wondered what the fate of fallen angels will be like? Those who rebelled against God and were expelled from heaven along with Satan? The Bible tells us that they will face a terrible punishment. They will be thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where they will suffer for all eternity. But this is not enough for Satan. He does not accept his defeat. He wants to drag as many people as he can to the same fate. He wants to destroy the human race, God's most perfect creation. And he began his evil work right at the beginning of the story. We read in the book of Genesis that he disguised himself as a serpent and went to the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve lived. He deceived them and convinced them to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which had been forbidden by God. Thus, sin entered the world and the couple lost intimacy with the Creator. They were expelled from paradise and began to suffer the consequences of their error. And today, as in the past, Satan does everything to bring condemnation to human beings. He diverts them from the path of salvation 
which is offered through Jesus' sacrifice. He tempts them, accuses them, oppresses them, and deceives them. And the Bible says that to deceive God's children, he is even capable of disguising himself as an angel of light. He may look good, but he is evil. He may seem truthful, but he is a liar. He may seem like a friend, but he is an enemy. But do not worry. God has not left us alone in this spiritual battle. He gave us his word, his spirit, and his angels. And among God's angels, there are some who stand out for their importance and power. They are the archangels, the leaders of the heavenly armies. And we will now know the names and functions of four of them. You will be amazed at what they do and what they can do for you. The first archangel we are going to talk about is Michael. Michael is one of God's most well-known and powerful angels. He belongs to a higher order among angels. He is a celestial being who acts as a messenger on special missions. Furthermore, he is a great warrior. The book of Revelation chapter 12 shows us that it was he who led the army of angels in heaven against Satan and his angels. He defeated them and cast them out of heaven. He defended God's honor and his sovereignty. And another passage that draws a lot of attention is in the book of Jude, which says that Michael fought the devil for the body of Moses. That's right, the body of Moses, the great leader of the people of Israel, who God used to free them from slavery in Egypt and to give them his law. Why did Satan want Moses' body? We don't know for sure, but we can imagine he had some evil intent. Perhaps he wanted to desecrate Moses' body or use it to deceive God's people. But Miguel didn't let that happen. He fought the devil for the body of Moses. But he didn't do it arrogantly or disrespectfully. He showed wisdom by not slandering the enemy, but he let God rebuke him. Let's read what is written. However, not even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, dared to make an insulting accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke him. See what an example of humility and devotion to God. Miguel did not think he was better than the devil but he recognized that only God has the authority to judge him. He did not allow himself to be carried away by pride, as Lucifer did, but submitted himself to the will of God. And already in the book of Daniel, it is reported that God sent an angel to deliver a message to the prophet. However, the prince of Persia, who was an agent of Satan, tried to stop him. So, God sent the archangel Michael to help him. See what Daniel said about this event. Then someone's hand touched me and placed me on my hands and on my wobbly knees. They lost their place in heaven. They were thrown out. They fell to the earth. See what the word of God says about this moment. There was fighting in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels also fought. However, they did not prevail. Their place was no longer found in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that ancient serpent, who was called the devil and Satan, the seducer of the whole world. Yes, he was cast down to the earth, and his angels with him. The army of rebellious angels was not able to defeat the army of faithful angels. The losers were sent to earth. And since then, they have been called fallen angels. And at the end of time, they will be judged and condemned by God. Have you ever wondered what the fate of fallen angels will be like? Those who rebelled against God and were expelled from heaven along with Satan? The Bible tells us that they will face a terrible punishment. They will be thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where they will suffer for all eternity. But this is not enough for Satan. He does not accept his defeat. He wants to drag as many people as he can to the same fate. He wants to destroy the human race, God's most perfect creation. And he began his evil work right at the beginning of the story. We read in the book of Genesis that he disguised himself as a serpent and went to the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve lived. He deceived them and convinced them to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which had been forbidden by God. Thus, sin entered the world and the couple lost intimacy with the Creator. They were expelled from paradise and began to suffer the consequences of their error. And today, as in the past, Satan does everything to bring condemnation to human beings. He diverts them from the path of salvation, which is offered through Jesus' sacrifice. He tempts them, accuses them, oppresses them, and deceives them. And the Bible says that to deceive God's children, he is even capable of disguising himself as an angel of light. He may look good, but he is evil. He may seem truthful, but he is a liar. He may seem like a friend, but he is an enemy. But do not worry. God has not left us alone in this spiritual battle. He gave us his word, his spirit, and his angels. And among God's angels, there are some who stand out for their importance and power. They are the archangels, the leaders of the heavenly armies. And we will now know the names and functions of four of them. You will be amazed at what they do and what they can do for you. The first archangel we are going to talk about is Michael. 
Michael is one of God's most well-known and powerful angels. He belongs to a higher order among angels. He's a celestial being who acts as a messenger on special missions. Furthermore, he is a great warrior. The book of Revelation chapter 12 shows us that it was he who led the army of angels in heaven against Satan and his angels. He defeated them and cast them out of heaven. He defended God's honor and his sovereignty. And another passage that draws a lot of attention is in the book of Jude, which says that Michael fought the devil for the body of Moses. That's right, the body of Moses, the great leader of the people of Israel, who God used to free them from slavery in Egypt and to give them his law. Why did Satan want Moses' body? We don't know for sure, but we can imagine he had some evil intent. Perhaps he wanted to desecrate Moses' body or use it to deceive God's people. But Miguel didn't let that happen. He fought the devil for the body of Moses, but he didn't do it arrogantly or disrespectfully. He showed wisdom by not slandering the enemy, but he let God rebuke him. Let's read what is written. However, not even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, dared to make an insulting accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke him. See what an example of humility and devotion to God. Miguel did not think he was better than the devil but he recognized that only God has the authority to judge him. He did not allow himself to be carried away by pride, as Lucifer did, but submitted himself to the will of God. And already in the book of Daniel, it is reported that God sent an angel to deliver a message to the prophet. However, the prince of Persia, who was an agent of Satan, tried to stop him. So, God sent the archangel Michael to help him. See what Daniel said about this event. Then someone's hand touched me and placed me on my hands and on my wobbly knees. And when he wrote on a tablet that the boy's name would be John, as the angel had said, his mouth opened and he began to praise God. And everyone was amazed at what God had done. But Gabriel didn't stop there. Six months after speaking to Zechariah, the angel Gabriel appeared to a young woman named Mary, who lived in the city of Nazareth. She was engaged to Joseph, a carpenter descended from David. She was a simple girl, humble and faithful to God. And she was chosen by God to be the mother of his son. See what the angel said to her, Rejoice, blessed one, the Lord is with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the people of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. What surprising news, right? Mary would become pregnant and give birth to the Son of God. He would be the promised Messiah, the eternal King, the Savior of the world. But Maria didn't understand how this would be possible as she was still a virgin. She asked the angel, How will this happen if I am a virgin? Then Gabriel explained, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Thus, he who is born will be called Holy, Son of God. Elizabeth, her relative, will also have a son in her old age. The one they said was sterile is already in her sixth month of pregnancy. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary, unlike Zechariah, did not doubt the angel's message. She believed in the power of God and surrendered to his will. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me according to your word. And so it was. Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit and gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. And she kept all these things in her heart. And now, let's talk about the last angel named in the Bible, which most people don't even know exists. His name is Abaddon or Apollyon. Abaddon or Apollyon are the names in Hebrew and Greek that mean angel of the abyss. These names refer to destruction and perdition. This angel is mentioned by the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 9, during the sounding of the fifth trumpet. Let's see what the Bible says about him. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to the earth. The star was given the key to the bottomless pit. When she opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like that of a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke coming out of the abyss. Out of the smoke came locusts and came upon the earth, and power was given to them like that of the scorpions of the earth. They were ordered not to harm the grass of the earth, nor any plant or tree, but only those who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not given power to kill them, but rather to cause them torment for five months. The agony they suffered was like that of a scorpion sting. In those days men will seek death, but will not find it. They will wish to die but death will flee from them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. They had something like crowns of gold on their heads, and their faces looked like human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like iron, and the sound of their wings was like the noise of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. 
They had tails and stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they had the power to cause torment to men for five months. They had a king over them, the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon. What a terrible scene, right? A star that falls from the sky and opens the abyss, from which monstrous locusts emerge that torment men for five months. And the worst of all is that they have a king over them, the angel of the abyss, who is the angel of destruction himself. He is responsible for this scourge that God sends upon the earth as part of his judgments. But who is this angel? Where he came from? What does he want? Could he be Satan himself, as some think? Or is he one of the fallen angels who followed Satan in his rebellion? Or is he an angel of God who does his will? These are difficult questions to answer, as the Bible does not give us many details about him. But one thing we can be sure of, he is not more powerful than God. He cannot do anything without God's permission. Could he be Satan himself, as some think? Or is he one of the fallen angels who followed Satan in his rebellion? Or is he an angel of God who does his will? These are difficult questions to answer, as the Bible does not give us many details about him. But one thing we can be sure of, he is not more powerful than God. He cannot do anything without God's permission. He cannot touch those who have the seal of God on their foreheads. He cannot stop God's plan for the salvation of humanity. But that doesn't mean he's not dangerous. He is a fierce and cruel enemy who wants to cause pain and suffering to men. He is an instrument of God's judgment on earth, which will be used to punish those who rejected God's love. He is a sign of the times, which shows that Jesus' return is near. He is a warning to us that we must be prepared for the great day of the Lord. So, before we end this video, I want to make a special invitation to you. If you have not yet accepted Jesus as your only Savior, I invite you to think about what you just heard. Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Son of God who came into the world to die on the cross for our sins and rise again on the third day. He is the only one who can give us peace, grace, and salvation. He is the only one who can protect us from evil and take us to heaven. If you want to receive Jesus into your heart, Make that decision right now. Don't wait any longer. Do not leave it for later. Don't harden your heart. Don't ignore God's voice. Just say yes to Jesus. Just say that you believe in Him, that you repent of your sins, that you want to follow and serve Him. Just say you want to be a child of God. If you said this prayer, I want to congratulate you. You just made the best decision of your life. You have just been born again. You have just joined the family of God. You have just received the seal of God on your forehead. You have just secured your place in heaven. And I want to know if you prayed that prayer. I want to know if you have accepted Jesus as your only Savior. I want to know if you said yes to Jesus. Therefore, I ask you to leave your answer in the comments. Whether yes or no, I want to hear your opinion. And if you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments. Your interaction is very important to me, and your ideas always enrich our community. And finally, I want to thank you for being part of this channel. Your presence and support are very valuable to me, and I hope you will continue to accompany me in the next videos, full of revelations and teachings from the Bible. May the peace and grace of the Lord be with you always. See you soon.